So now we have. Ah, uh, okay. Why don't you come up? <laughs> so now we have some time for questions and comments. Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> Thoughts of yes. Uh, go there. So my question is mostly to the project like uh, I want to hear about the project more I understand like the big picture like the serpent or like the elephant's trunk but uh, Finn and Rachel and Ines and all the others can you tell me more about what you are doing like I hear exciting things coming on board but do you want to give a sneak peek so that, that's that's not a question but that's more of a curiosity thanks do you want to respond or shall we <laughs> shall we get some other questions okay <laughs> so now i'm putting the audience on the spot you can <laughs> Uh, thanks. I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear uh, from what we try to present here that, I mean, one first uh, extremely important uh, kind of point is that you really have to be very careful. I mean, uh, th that a lot of the uh, debates that are, inf that are influencing and informing policy, uh, I mean, if I were a pure policymaker, in quote, I would actually end up being pretty confused. Um, so that, that's sort of at least one first from the sort of, if you wish, background type work we have been doing. Um, but there are also other papers coming um, in terms of uh, trying to tease out, and, and, and uh, David's paper is, is, is one concrete example, and, and, and there's much more coming uh, um, on that. In addition to that, um, we have been doing work on, 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 on inequality in Mozambique. Uh, some of you may ha have participated in the session on that. And it's very clear um, that <clears throat> Mozambique is, 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 an, is a very interesting case uh, of, of this. And, and, and uh, that country level evidence will very much be going hand in hand with the kinds of things that uh, David has been uncovering. Um, and Interestingly, uh, when we then look to Vietnam, there are quite distinct differences between Vietnam and Mozambique in this regard. And this does uh, seem to reflect uh, a number of factors that, 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 that we then also could discuss in more detail. When it comes to the experimental work, um, I mean, I try to highlight that, that, that it's not just sort of uh, some very sort of small standard lab in the field. I mean, we're talking about, oh, how many is it? More than a thousand, uh, 1,020, if I remember correctly, uh, individuals in each of these two countries. So we, we and it will be um, that they will be participating um, in a number of experiments where um, we will be then both doing it in rural areas, in urban areas, um, and the, the, it, it will basically be tracking uh, the perceptions of inequality and what that means for uh, your willingness uh, to redistribute um, your perceptions of what is fair is that influenced by um, whether uh, differences in, in income, whether they seem to be reflecting merit um, or they are pure luck determined. So, um, I mean, th and, and this, this is where we, we, we obviously cannot say yet what, what's going to be the uh, results of this, but I mean, uh, we're talking about preparatory work that has now been going on for, yeah, a year and a half uh, in order to do this at this scale. Um, but I mean, if you do want um, uh, to sort of have, a, in, in quote, a modern world uh, illustration of, of this type of work, you should look at, at the uh, work of the Bergen Group, I mean, with, um, what's his name? I forget his name right now, but it, it's the Bergen group that are doing the experimental work in this kind. Um, so, yeah, I think that's approximately where we are right now. Ines, do you want to add? No? <laughs> I guess I can just add briefly on the experimental work. I mean, I've, done, I've written a bit about 
uh, being a bit critical about experimental work in terms of the generalizability of the findings, right? So you've done this lab in the field in this one context, and how do you know that what you found applies anywhere else? So that's something we really try to look at a bit more directly through this work. So we look at urban and rural areas in two very different countries, and do we find the same thing? And so how do the, the, the macrostructural context, how does that influence what you find differently across the, the cases? Hello. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I find really interesting. I I, I really liked the um, sort of the beginning, and I, and actually it made me go. I think maybe in a different direction from what I expected. But I think the part that I find really really interesting is that I think when we think about the effects of inequality and we look at the theoretical literature on that, I think sometimes the sort of the papers are a bit sloppy in terms of how the analytical part, what, what part of inequality is responsible for the mechanism and the fact that in the conclusion they say there is inequality, right? And I think that this is really interesting to now, like what you were doing in the review, but to like really carefully look what is it really that is supposed to be driving the mechanism when they say inequality, right? So in the capital market imperfections type of story, I think that most of the action comes from actually <clears throat> the amount of people that is below some threshold. So it looks more like, in some sense, like poverty type of thing, right? So looking at the bottom for the, When you look at political economy mechanism, there's a lot about subjective inequality, right? How people perceive it or not. Um, people talk about whatever, the Trump stuff that you had said, like some people talk about I mean, the, the evidence is not very clear, but I mean, it could be that could be that it's about earnings inequality and not income inequality, right? That has to do with precisely like whatever issues of uh, shame or, or whatever it is, right? Uh, status and stuff. And that's so that if you receive like uh, exactly like transfer, like, like um, government transfer, that doesn't help so much. And so I think this would be a, and the absolute versus relative stuff. So it could be like some mechanisms are about absolute and others are about relative. And, and I think that would be really extremely valuable kind of, that you guys are already more or less going in that direction and to be more precise in that. And then to maybe, if you can, like, use the, the actual measurement of inequality that actually relates to the point made instead of just, like, the Gini coefficient. Thanks. I'll collect a couple questions. You and then here. Oh, you can stop there. Yeah. Well, I'll take you first just oh, okay. because right. you're closer. <laughs> sure, sure. Thanks, okay. thanks, Rachel. Uh, I think first to welcome the presentations. Um, and, and there's something fun you said, which you know I'm quite interested in because I think we did have an extensive discussion about social protection, um, especially in Mozambique um, yesterday. And, and I think you made a very interesting point that said if, you, if we really want to improve the distribution of incomes, especially to poor households, we need to think about what happens in the labor market. Um, and, I, and I often find a lot of conceptual difficulty in how we think of work, um, especially in places like, like Mozambique and in many other places in the developing world. When we talk about labor in that sense, what does it look like? Is it just time used and spent in things that can bring in income or contribute to some livelihood? Or are we talking about work in the traditional sense where, yes, you are working, but you also have certain safeguards, be it provided by the employer or even outside of the employer-employee relationship, that can at least deal with some of the risks and shocks associated with work, especially for commodity-reliant economies like Mozambique, um, where if commodity prices shift, um, sort of negative terms of trade, one might find themselves um, in precarious work, out of work, in work in some instances, in the formal, in the informal space. Um, and how do we deal with this issue of shock absorbers as a way to deal with inequality? So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Thanks. Yeah, that, thank you very much. I have two questions. One is uh, to Professor Tapp. Now, you, you have emphasized the value of reporting the number of poor people, but uh, we rarely report that. 
And actually, I think uh, maybe we should just be reporting that, the number of poor people, rather than just the anti-county ratio. Uh, I always say that we, we emphasize poverty measure, uh, the one which we want to report as the anti-county ratio, ignoring the number of poor people. So that's uh, one question. The other one is about, up until, up until now, we have been thinking about uh, any level of uh, inequality, any type, anywhere, as a bad thing. But in this session, we, we seem to say, maybe some level of inequality is good. Maybe not everywhere, maybe in some countries. Also, um, the location of um, the concentration of income also might be useful depending on where it is in the income distribution, which means type of inequality might be a good thing. So actually, so my, and we are the same people, okay? We are the same group, saying very different things. So now, um, Is inequality something that we should eliminate? Or is something, some type we should promote? Some level we might tolerate? Actually, what's the policy message? Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Let me turn to the panelists then. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, I, I take the, the first a little bit more like like, like sort of my comment to, to, to encourage us uh, to, 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 in a way, continue. But I mean, I, I should like to sort of add that this is not a project that, uh, for which I would have sort of gone in and sort of taken responsibility if I had d different donors or funders. Uh, I mean, we have been extremely fortunate with the NNF that they have basically, they have a completely hands-off and, and, and this is why we have been trying to, uh, how can you say, pursue some of these things, even if we are aware that, 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 that I mean, it might not so quickly result in, in, in uh, some sort of policy recommendations as, as, as you otherwise might want and so on. But we do believe um, that we as an economics profession probably we've been a bit sloppy of not paying attention to some of these issues uh, more heads on because there are for example a couple of papers of theoretical nature on, on the sort of absolute relative but we as empirical economists we haven't really I mean and, and, and it's that type of thing that we're trying to address. Now um, on on this about, I mean, uh, what do I mean about, about the labor? I mean, I'm, I'm really just thinking about it in the following way. If I'm an extremely poor people who have absolutely uh, very, very limited uh, land and very limited uh, other uh, tools and so on, uh, then really uh, I'm, I'm left with the working power that I have myself in order to generate an income. And that's why how the labor market is actually functioning, um, and, and when I say the labor market, I'm talking about both the formal and the informal labor, how they actually work and, and which are the uh, income, uh, incomes that, that this market generates. And, and when I'm talking about market, I mean, I, I include informal, the incomes that, that that generates, I mean, they are absolutely fundamental uh, in terms of understanding uh, what will then happen subsequently, because then subsequently we will only have then possibilities either for doing transfers or taxes um, uh, in terms of changing that original income distribution, right? So it's in that sense. And, and, th and this is where I have been trying to stress that we need to be very careful um, when we are then sort of saying social protection and then assuming that, 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 that the state or the government has, I mean, uh, almost unlimited possibilities for doing this. First of all, uh, financial resources can be very scarce. Um, and secondly, you might not have the institution capability to, to get the money out there. I mean, we know now that, that this is improving uh, because mobile money is now becoming a bit more possible and so on and so forth. But I mean, literally, the, the, the ability for a government to get 
the funds, the support out there where it's required in terms of social protection is often extremely uh, constrained uh, when you are in, 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 in poor environments. Um, when it comes to uh, the, the questions from uh, Professor Mwabu, I mean, I, I tend to think that it's absolutely relevant to use the different indicators that we are using uh, when we are talking about progress and that, that we should use the whole battery, but we should not forget the absolute numbers because the absolute numbers, um, I mean, uh, might lead um, to uh, economic consequences that we need to address. And that's, of course, why we're talking about population increase. I mean, that's an absolute thing, right, often. I mean, you can, uh, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm scared about what's happening in Nigeria. I mean, it's going to be the world's largest country in 2050. I mean, and, and there, it, it helps me at least to think about that when I add in the absolute numbers. And, the, and I could have added in more numbers of the absolute, but, 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 but that's something that I think we do need to think about. Um, uh, the, the, the second part, um, of your question. Let me just try to... Yeah, why don't you take that one? I... Um, I try to got the sort of um, inequality, good or bad, right? Um, let me try to be sort of pragmatic. So basically the point here is we should not aim at having no inequality whatsoever, no? I mean, th there is a story of incentives. I mean, we know that. We don't want all earn the same and then we kill the system. That's why I said, so some inequality is fine and we know that. I mean, that's part of the system. Uh, the point here in the presentation was, okay, but so when, when inequality increases, it's not only the level, but also so what's happening in the distribution, right? So again, to be pragmatic, you may want to have a genie of say 30, okay? as in many sort of relatively equal European countries. But what you don't want to have is that, so keeping that Gini level, that the concentration at the top increases. That's why, so it's not only the level, but also the, the, the distribution, right? So say, okay, some, some Gini of 30 is good. It means that some people are putting more effort in what they do, incentives, so on, right? But if within that Gini, you suddenly have more concentration at the top, then the data, and I mean, there are also theoretical insights, of course, this, this suggests that this is not good. This actually kills the incentives. This guy is earning a lot. He's the owner of everything. All the income goes to him. And, and I'm putting the same effort, right? So when it's concentration at the top, did you can see, no, the super rich and all of this story that we know, this, this goes against the positive role of inequality. It's actually killing incentives because we know this associated with sort of political connections or, or I mean, you know, all of the story of, of the, the problem of concentration of income at the, at the top, at the super rich. If, if, if I could just add sort of one uh, observation here also, I think it's very important to keep in mind that if we take, and I'm not saying this is the truth and nothing but the truth, but if we do take the standard two-sector Lewis model and just think about how development happens in that context, right? Then it's a definitional relationship that inequality, if, if you take um, uh, poor people in the traditional rural sector and move them into the urban higher income, uh, th then you are going to have increasing inequality up until the turning point. And, 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 I, I mean, and, and in some ways, if that were the only thing that happened, then I could live with increasing inequality for some time because that would actually reflect that the structural transformation of the economy is taking place. But the problem, of course, is that very often what happens, and this is just to, to sort of stre uh, stress what David is saying, is that as that process then goes on, it doesn't happen as lost, just like sort of an automatic machine that goes through this process. No, it is that in that process, then you're starting to have political, social, other processes where the, the, the sort of automaticity of the process uh, it get, gets interfered with. I don't know if I can put it that way, that may not be the best, but, 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 but and, and, and I mean, um, and, and I, I think that that underlying structural thing versus then the other things is, is sort of where one needs to be. Um, so, so, so that's why, uh, th that I cannot go out and say that I'm against any kind of uh, differences in terms of income among people. I just can't do that because it depends. Ines, did you want to 
jump in. Maybe I can add just a comment on the experimental work. We are also trying to get at this question of whether people tolerate some level of inequality. So the type of games we do is that we assign people with a certain amount of money, two players, one gets more than the other. And in some cases, it's because they perform better or worse in one activity. In other cases, it's because we gave it randomly by luck. And we are interested in seeing whether people are averse, adverse to inequality in both cases, or perhaps they think, no, but if the other player person performed better in this task, it's fair that he gets more than me. So in this case, we are perhaps also getting at this idea that some level of inequality is tolerated depending on the source of inequality. So that was just my, my two cents. Right. Just to add, this is also the story of market versus structural inequality, or the story of opportunities that we were discussing before. So we, if, all, if we all have the same opportunities, then some from then on, some inequality is okay. If the problem is as if the inequality is, is the outcome of some people having better opportunities than others. We were talking about this at lunch the other day. <laughs> But um, so I think we're almost at time and I just want to thank all of you for joining us. It's late in the day. I think for some of it, it's, it's the middle of the night. So, so that we're still speaking somewhat coherently is, is a good sign. But you know, please look at the website. There's a bunch of papers posted there. There will be more coming, certainly from the experimental work, and I think maybe some more papers from you. So, so please you know, do keep engaged with the project. Thanks very much. Thank you.